Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul. Yes. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Can you stand to your feet this morning and let's bless the name of the Lord? Because his name is great. I said his name is great. And he is greatly to be praised. Does anybody got a praise in their spirit this morning? Come on, his word will stand forever. I said his word is going to stand forever. Come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Hey. Come on, tell your neighbor, I'll stand. I'll stand. Come on, tell the neighbor, I'm going to stand on his word. We'll forever stand on your word. We'll forever trust in your word. We'll forever believe in your word. It stands forever. It stands forever. God will forever stand on your word. Stand on your word. We'll forever trust in your word. Trust in your word. We'll forever believe in your word. Believe in your word. It stands forever. It stands forever. It stands forever. It stands forever. We'll forever stand on your word. Stand on your word. We'll forever trust in your word. Trust in your word. We'll forever believe in your word. Believe in your word. It stands forever. It stands forever. It stands forever. It stands we have no other choice there is no other way we will put our hope in you on every mountain tops and on our stormy days we will trust in you we have no other choice there is no other there way there is no other way we, we will, will put our hope in you on every mountain top on every mountain top and on our stormy days we will trust in you yeah. we'll forever send no your word send no your word we'll forever trust in your word trust in your word we'll forever believe in your word believe in your word it stands forever it stands forever it stands forever it stands forever god will forever stand on your word stand on your word we'll forever trust in your word trust in your word we'll forever believe in your word believe in your word it stands forever it stands forever it stands forever it stands forever god will forever stand on your word stand on your word we'll forever trust in your word trust in your word god will forever believe in your word believe in your word it stands forever it stands forever it stands forever it stands come on say forever. we'll forever stand on your word stand on your word we'll forever trust in your word trust in your word we'll forever believe in your word believe in your word it stands forever it stands forever it stands forever it stands forever god will forever stand on your word stand on your word we'll forever trust in your word trust in your word we'll forever believe in your word 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 stand on 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 your word you are 
the word. You are the word. You are the word. You are the word. You are the word. You are the word. You are the word. Trust in your word. Trust in your word. Trust in your word. Trust in your word. Cause you are the word. 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 You are the living word. You are the word. You are the living word. You are the word. You are the man in the kingdom. You are the word. From the heavens. You are the word. You are the word. You are the word. Hallelujah. Give him praise. This morning, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Whose word will you trust in? Hallelujah. Whose word will you stand on? Hallelujah. Whose word will you believe in? Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God another hand. Clap of praise in this place. Hallelujah. We serve a risen Savior. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. He is risen and he's alive. Hallelujah. We serve a God who's bigger than all. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a praise in this building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we stand on your word. Hallelujah. God, we believe in your word. We trust your word on this morning. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for just being God. Hallelujah. God, we trust you, oh God. We love you on this morning, God. Hallelujah, God. We just want to say, God, our, we're, our praise, oh God. Let it be pleasing unto you this morning, oh God. Let it be a sweet savor unto you on this morning, oh God. We bring you our praise. We bring you our your honor. You, you're worthy, oh God, to be praised. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for allowing us to assemble once again in your presence, God. Because we are here to worship you, oh God. Let your Holy Spirit, Father God, come in this place, oh God. Hallelujah. As we worship you. Oh, God, as we praise your name, God, the name that is above all names, God. Hallelujah. We'll be sure to give you the glory and the honor, Father God. We ask you, oh, God, right now to cover our leaders, oh, God, to walk with them, oh, God. Order their steps, oh, God, as they give us a word from you. Father, we thank you for all the, the, the staff that's here. We thank you, oh, God, for our leaders that's here, oh, God. We thank you, oh, God that for the people coming on this morning to worship you as well, Father God, that you will just encamp around about them, O oh God. Let your angels protect them on this morning, and we'll be sure again, God, to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Our scripture reading is coming from Joel chapter 2, verses 21 to 32. Hallelujah. And it reads, Fear not, o, li- o land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye feel beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward 
that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show my wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Hallelujah for the word. Come on, hallelujah for the word. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. For he is worthy to be praised. Come on, he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O oh God. We thank you on this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy of our praise, O oh God. You are worthy, God. We lift our voices unto you on this morning. Hallelujah, God. Bless your name, Jesus. All the saints and angels bow before your throne. All the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing, You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Come on, help us sing. All the saints and angels bow before your throne. All the elders. All the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing. You are worthy of it all. You Come on. For from you are all things. And to, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. the glory. You're worthy. You're worthy. You are worthy of it all. You're worthy. You're worthy. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory.
Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. You have no rival. You have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ the King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Because you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You're worthy, Lord. You You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. Lord. You're worthy. Hallelujah. You deserve it, God. Yeah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Come on. Say that. You say that again. Sing it you again. are worthy of it all. Hey, God. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Say it one more time. You're worthy of it all. Hey God, you are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Come on, he deserves the glory. Hallelujah. Come on, he deserves the honor. Hallelujah. He deserves the praise this morning. Come on, lift up your hands this morning and just give him the honor and the glory. Anything that you need, he's got it. He is Jehovah Jireh. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory you deserve it Lord you deserve it God you deserve the glory Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Come on, Zion. He deserves the glory. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. We cast down our crowns this morning. And we honor your name, Yeshua. Hallelujah. We honor you as king over our lives as king over the nations you are the desire of all nations Just, just take some time. And let's release one sound in this room for the adoration of our God. We honor your name, Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. We honor you. Heal us right now. Send forth your healing virtue in this room right now. Get up, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, take that moment. We're not in a hurry this morning. Take that moment. Take that moment. You may not get this moment ever again. Take it. And thank him. Thank him for being God. Thank him for being savior. Thank him for being more than you could ever need or desire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's in the room. <laughs> He's in the room. He's in the room. We worship you, great Jehovah, Elohim. El Shaddai, our soon coming King. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, shout out. Give him a shout of praise this morning. I'm coming to your house. I'm coming to your house. I'm coming to your house. I am coming to your house. I am coming to your house to do what I said I was going to do. Yes, Lord. Just open the door. Just open the door. Just open the door. Sarah, just open the door. 
Open the door. Nothing's too hard for me. Nothing's too hard for me. Nothing's too hard for me. Come on, give me your plans. Give me your desires. Come on, give it to me. And I will do more than you can imagine. Two fish, five loaves of bread. Come on, two fish and five loaves. Yes, Lord. Woo. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory. 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 Come on, get your breakthrough. Get it. He showed up just for you. up God stir your people no more complacency stir us God stir our hearts and our minds thank you Lord thank you Lord come on clap those hands for Jesus come on clap them yeah. We worship you in spirit and in truth. Come on, clap those hands for Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Take us higher, Lord. Mighty warrior. Great in battle, you have overcome. My defender, no contender, you've already won. And I will lift up my eyes to the hills where my help comes from. For the Lord is my shield and my fortress, I fear no one. Let the King of glory, let the King of glory in. Oh, oh, oh. Let the King of glory in. Let the King of glory, let the King of glory in. Oh, oh, oh. Let the King of glory in. Come on, let the King of Glory in. My provider, my provider, yes, your job, yes, your job, you have done you enough. You have done enough. Oh, chains are broken, chains are broken, blind eyes open, blind eyes open. When we lift when you we up, lift you up, and I will lift up, I will my lift up. To the hills where my help comes from. Whoa. For the Lord is my shield and my fortress. I fear no one. No one. Let the King of glory, let the King of glory in. Oh, oh, oh. Let the King of glory in. Let the King of glory. Let the King of glory in. Oh, 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 oh. 
Let the King of Glory in. Let the King of Glory. Let the King of Glory in. Oh oh oh. Let the King of Glory in. Let the King of Glory. Let the King of Glory in. Oh oh oh. Let the King of Glory in. Come on, praise him. Come on in. Oh, praise the one who is the Lord of hosts. Oh, praise the one who has redeemed my, my soul. Oh, praise the one who has a thought. Sets the captives free. Oh, praise the one who is the Lord of hosts. Oh, praise the one yeah. who has redeemed my, my soul. soul. Oh, praise the one who has authority. Who has authority. Let the King of Glory in. 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 Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 
King of Glory in. Oh, 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 oh. Let the King of Glory in. Let the King of Glory. Let the King of Glory in. Oh, oh, oh. Let the King of Glory. Let the King. Let the King of Glory. Let the King of Glory in. Oh, oh, oh. Let the King of Glory. Let the King. Let the King of Glory. Let the King of Glory in. Oh, oh, oh. Let the King of Glory. Let the King. Come on in, 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 On. I want some saved people. I want some saved and sanctified people to begin to give God praise in the house. I want some saved and sanctified people just to begin to bless the name of Jesus. I don't know what you need this morning. I don't know what you came here with, but I want you to right now make your body a living sacrifice. Come on, young people. Y'all worship with us. Come on, lift those hands up. Lift those hands. Come on, children. Lift those hands. Everybody, come on. Let's honor God. Let's honor God in the place. Honor God in the place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the name. Come on, bless the name of Jesus. Come on, lift his name up. Hallelujah. I came with an expectancy in my spirit. I came with an expectancy in my heart. And I know God is able. Yes, I know God is able. Hallelujah. Somebody say he's able, he's able, he's able. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. I praise his holy name. Uh, hallelujah. I believe we in a sanctified house. I want y'all to start demanding worship all around you. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I want y'all to start demanding worship all around you. I realized a few days ago, amen, I ain't been saved that long. Ain't been, ain't been baptized in the Holy Ghost that long. Ain't been sanctified that long. But I do know one thing. That God loves a worshiper. Any, any worshipers in the house? Any people that know how to worship him beyond it? Come on, I want some worshipers to begin to release your spirit in this place. Hallelujah. And just begin to honor the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, he's been so good to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. I come this morning to release my worship unto him. Glory be to the Lamb of God because he's, he's better to me than I've been to myself. Is that your testimony this morning that you can testify of the goodness of Jesus? Come on, oh, come on, oh, don't, don't spectate it. Somebody shall participate it. Glory be, to, glory be to the Lamb of God. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
I'm grateful this morning. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Boy, I said glory be. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, the, the word teaches us that he have no he have he knows what we have need of even before we pray. And I also read somewhere, Millie, that God will withhold no good thing from you. So he's not in the process of holding things from his people. But I do believe that that which God has for us is in his storehouse. And that's why he gives us the keys. The key of David, the key of David is something that was stripped from Jewish proselytes because the religious leaders of that time never wanted to see people get into the presence of God beyond their traditions. And I believe that westernized people, I believe sometimes we worship God based on the condition and the tradition. But the word of God teaches me that my condition is not the prerequisite or the indicator or the inspiration for my worship. My worship is fueled and funneled because of my adoration for him. Because of my honor for him. Because of my love for him. Does anybody love him in here this morning? Glory be to God. You had to because you came to church on this holiday weekend. So there must be something about you that put a press on your spirit to get into the presence of God. I want you to look at somebody beside you and I really want you to look at them and say, I'm not going to show up here and be disappointed. I'm going to get into the presence of God this morning. You want to tell somebody in here, tell them, I'm not coming in here just to have a church service. Somebody say, I came to give him worship. Hallelujah. I came to give him praise. Woo. Yes, I came to give him worship, worship, worship. Hallelujah. Is there any worshipers in this house? Into the presence of God that the devil can't find me. I want you to get into your secret place right now and begin to worship, worship, worship. Woo! I want somebody in here to worship. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout real loud. There's healing in my worship. Come on, somebody in here. I want some believers to really, we're in a secret place right now. We're in our own personal prayer and worship chamber. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, the devil's not even invited. Somebody shout, the devil's not invited to my worship, to my worship ceremony. In other words, I'm, I'm giving him, hallelujah, an eviction notice right now. When I lift my hands, it means something. When I begin to open up my mouth and bless his name, it means something. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I believe God is going to do something in this place this morning. I believe somebody's going to walk out of here healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. Father, we love you. Ooh. Lord, we love you. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord, in this place. We love you. Lord, we love you. We love you. We lift our hands to you. Oh, God. We ba 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 say. see under. Lord, we blow kisses unto you. Hallelujah. We worship and lift our hands in adoration. Oh, we need your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody going to have to match my worship. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I'm coming to give you an invitation. 
into the holiest of holies. I'm coming to the worship team got you to the hall. They got you to the courtyard. They got you into the inner sanctuary. But I want somebody in here that has uh, the key of David to go on and just somebody shout. Come on and tap in with me for a minute. Somebody shout. Come on and tap in with me for a minute. Glory to God. Don't lose the momentum, preachers. Don't lose the momentum. Keep it coming. I know. Come on. Tap in. Lord, anoint their hands right now. Anoint their hands for a prophetic flow. Anoint their hands. Keep it coming. Anoint their hands. You good? Anoint their hands in the name of Jesus. Anoint the hands in this sanctuary that are lifted unto you. And I pray by the power of the living God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, that you will begin to anoint them afresh. Hallelujah. You said in your word that in the last days you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh. And oh God, we don't take it for granted this morning. We receive your spirit. We receive your spirit. Lord, Lord, you're able. Come on, right there where you're at. Keep those keys going, brothers. Father, we love you. Oh, God, we honor you. Oh, God, we honor you. Oh, God, we honor you. Ooh. Oh, my. Lord, we want you to do something unprecedented in us. So I believe there's some people in this building today that are ready, God, for what's next. They are ready, God, for what's next. Their heart bleeds worship. Their spirit exclaims and expounds worship unto you, oh God. I believe that in this worship, the yokes will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe, I believe. Somebody shout to the Lord right now. I believe. I believe. Come on, tell him. I believe. I believe. Come on, come on. I believe God. I believe you, God. Hallelujah. I believe you, God. I believe you, God. every barrier to in the name of Jesus hallelujah I take authority over every level of doubt and fear in the name of Jesus oh God may your power may your power be fervent may it be fervent and activated in this place and we give your name praise Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 
Lord, somebody needs you now today more. Lord, we're not even asking you for a miracle. We're asking you for justice. Lord, be the God of justice that we know you are. Bring justice and righteousness to every situation. You said in your word that you would lead us down paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Lead us down the path, oh God. And Lord, we'll trust you even when we can't see what's next. We'll trust you even when we can't see around the corner. We'll trust you, oh God. When, when you've gone silent, we'll trust you at your word. And we'll know that you are able. know it. Hallelujah. You won. You have won the victory. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You won it all. could not hold you down because you are the risen king you are the risen king somebody say seated seated in majesty you are the risen king you are the risen king come on I want everybody to sing with your voice Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you have won. Hallelujah. 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 You want it all. Not hold you. Not hold you are, you are the risen king. You are the risen king. Somebody shot. He's seated, seated in majesty. Cause you are the risen king. Come on, lift those voices. You are the risen king. God has risen. Yeah. Woo Thank you, Jesus. He won the victory. He reigns. He reigns on high. Our God. Our God is risen. And he's alive. He won. He won the victory. He reigns on high. To a hush. Come on, put those hands together one more time. 
Come on, put them together one more time. If you're here this morning and you feel that the Lord needs to bring healing to you, I want you to come to the altar. I want you to come. I want you to meet me here. I'm going to pray over you this morning. I want you to pray over you. Say, Lord, I need healing. I need a touch. I need a touch this morning. You bring, come to the altar. Come on up. Don't be afraid. The altar is a safe place. Come on up. The altar is a safe place. Come on, the altar is a safe place. If you're up here and you feel like you need prayer, come on down. Come on down. There's nobody like our God. There's nobody like our King. There's nobody like our God. There's nobody like our King. Come on. Oh. I sincerely believe this morning that the Lord set this season up, this time up for all of us to come today. Because he's got plans for you. He's got plans for you. Somebody just tap yourself on your spirit and just say, God's got plans for me. And it may not seem like it came through the people that you wanted it to be through, but somebody shout, nobody can stop God. Come on, I want you to be encouraged this morning. Nobody can stop God. Millie, you're not going to be abused your whole life. You're not going to be the black sheep and the outcast your whole life. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not that right now. You're not that right now. Come here, baby. Come to me. I'm going to lay hands on you. I'm going to tell you something. When I lay hands on you today, you ain't never going to be the same again. Come up here. Come up on this platform with me. You come up here. You hear me when I say this to you. I want you to look at your apostle. You hear my words. God has called you to him. Don't you look at your life right now and think that your life is going to be miserable because, miserable because it's not. I remember the day you were born. And I remember you as a little baby and the word that was spoken over you about how special you are and were and you always will be. You stay close to God even when it seems like you're by yourself. You stay close to God. And you're going to find in that place that the things that come to you that break your heart, that God will not only make sense of it, but he's going to keep it from destroying you. Now your, your, your G-mama is right behind you and your G-pa is right in front of you. And I'm going to tell you something, young lady. You are never alone. I want you to get that in your spirit right now. You are never alone. I'm going to touch you today. But I rebuke this torment in the name of Jesus. This torment in your mind and this feeling of being unwanted in this feeling of being unloved I come against this spirit of abandonment in the name of Jesus and I break this yoke off your mind in Jesus name I come against every word that's been spoken to tear you down 
And I declare that it will have no impact on your future and on your life. In Jesus' name. I want you to lift your hands for a minute, baby. Lift your hands. Lift both of them. Lift both of them. Give it to Jeff. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm going to mark you today. And I declare that you're going to do great things in the name of Jesus. You're going to do great things. You're going to do great things in the name of Jesus. You're going to do great things in the name of Jesus. These memories, these thoughts that keep recycling in your head, I come against them right now in the name of God. I release you today of the bondage. I release you. Hallelujah. I release you of it today. I declare in the name of Jesus. We deliver you, your life, your mind, and your heart over to the light. In the name of Jesus. I break the yoke of bitterness. Hey. Yeah, mama. And I speak even to her future. That she shall not be a product of rejection and abandonment and separation and division. But God, we declare in the name of Jesus, according to your word, that she will prosper and be in health even as her soul prosper. In the name of Jesus. 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 College is waiting on you, child. Do you hear me? The professional world is waiting on you. Hallelujah. You're going to do things in your family that have never been done before. You're going to do things in your life that you never imagined doing before. And God's going to use you. He's going to give you favor. He's going to give you favor. Child, do you hear me? You are favored. You are favored by God. That's why the attack comes against you so hard to try to get you to become a product of addiction and a product of depression. But I declare to you today that God has already prayed for you. Hallelujah. And after you've been converted, you're going to win many people. You're going to win many people. I want you to give God praise right now. Come on, just lift those hands one more time, Millie. And just give God praise. Come on, lift them with me. Lift them with me. Lift them with me. Hallelujah. 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 And the Lord says that you will not spend your childhood depressed. You will not spend your childhood worrying. Yeah, look at me. The Lord said, I've got it. I've got it. You give it to me. It's not your job to fix it. You give it to me. Amen. The higher you lift your hands to him, the more this weight is going to come up off of you in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, hey, 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 hey. I'm saying the higher you lift your hands, the more the weight is going to come off of you in the name of Jesus. Amen? So just ask him. And God said, whatever you ask me for, God said, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I'll fix it in Jesus' name. Come here. Give me a hug, baby. Come here. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Y'all don't know, this, this little girl's a miracle. She's a walking miracle. Kids have a testimony just like adults do. I see you on a stage and plays singing. <laughs> Stay in whatever... Whatever uh, programs you're in in school, don't get out of them. Don't let nobody talk you out of them. Your, your teachers are talking about you behind your back, and it's all positive. It's all positive, okay? So stay focused. Stay focused. And I'm going to ask the Lord to give you thick skin. Thick skin so you're not easily offended. Okay? Be strong in the Lord. In 
Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all give God praise. God's got a barrier around you, you too. A protective hedge around both of you. Past three months have been a challenge for you two. It's like the world has been coming up against y'all's life and your relationship and everything else. But God says, set the expectation, set the tone. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to protect this house. Y'all, this is a wonderful couple right here. It's a wonderful couple right here. And I believe God has favored them for a time. So they're, they're definitely faithful people. And they have a hunger for the word of God. And I don't miss people like that in my spirit. And I see it. I see it. Remember this. That it seemed like an uphill battle now to get to where God has already said you're going but you're just about one prayer away from getting the breakthrough that you need. <laughs> and I believe by the time y'all leave out this building today, that things this week, God said, I'm going to start giving you some traction. You've been struggling getting it going. You've been struggling getting it going. God said, I'm going to give you some traction. Come on, let us pray. Father, right now, for these ones that are here around this altar, I pray in the name of Jesus over their lives and over their decisions. I pray, God, over the weight that rests upon them. And Lord God, I speak a lifting in their heart, in their hands, and in their spirit. I bless them in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, for your might and for your virtue and for your word to do what man can't do. Some standing here this morning even have gotten some news that's a bit confusing from medical reports. I pray right now, God, that you let the fire of the Holy Spirit move upon their lives and work the miracle that they need in Jesus' name. I come against every sickness and disease that is triggered by their neurology by their mind and by how they see life their perspective their outlook and intake let your word be true today in the name of Jesus I thank you for it and I bless you and Lord as we lift you in this place through your word amen let there be a manifestation of change in their lives this week in the name of Jesus sister Sarah Last Sunday, I saw you get a breakthrough in your spirit. This past week, the Lord said, you're coming back into your own. You're coming back into your true self. But God said, you're going to be better this time than you've ever been in the past. In Jesus' name, you take these next 60 days. And the Lord said, consider reconsecrating again. I don't know if that's been in your spirit or not about continuing on in your uh, consecrated life but the Lord said maybe you need to consider it on going on into resurrections I mean into Pentecost Sunday and the change that you make on the inside will be the change that you see on the outside in Jesus name I'm going to push you right on through the door in Jesus name amen come on put your hands together and let's give God praise I'll go back to your seats amen thank you worship team I believe you're ready I believe you're ready Children can be released at this time. The whole London put her hands up and said, yes. Did you? <laughs> oh, my Lord. Amen. Amen. Children can be released at this time. I want you to go in your word with me as they're gathering themselves um, to the, uh, let's see here. Let me get my section up. Excellent.
I want to say welcome to our online family. God bless every one of you for joining us, and thank you so much for coming in the room with us as we break the bread of life. All right, let's go back to the book where we left off last week. I want you to go to Romans chapter 8. I want you to go to Romans the 8th chapter. Y'all give me just a few minutes, and I'm going to share this word with you. I want you to go to Romans the 8th chapter. I love this, this particular passage of um, Scripture because it brings us into a place where it shows several things about God. Um, and that encourages me. Thank you, Lord. You know, you got to have your, your worship got to be the same at home as it is in the building. Worship isn't about the, um, the communication of gifts only. It's important, the communication of gifts. But you don't have to be able to sing a lot of different runs and stuff like that to be a worshiper. What that requires is being in God's presence and being able to remain in his presence. And then when you come out of his presence, you come out with a glory that'll be released. My prayer for those of us that are here today as God begins to elevate you, and when I mean elevate, as you begin to mature in your faith. Somebody shout, I want to mature in my faith. Yeah, as we mature in our faith that we'll understand that there is a glory that the Lord has anointed you to release in this earth. And there is a place that God wants you to release that glory. Because if the glory that you're trying to release in the end is not receiving it, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, then you've got to be obedient and wise enough to listen to God and get in a place where that glory can be released and developed and even edified in Jesus' name. Amen? Um, everything that we do in our walk is as unto the glory of God. We do it as unto the Lord. Amen? Everything that we do, our day-to-day our -day activities, our living, which is not in vain, it is all unto the glory of God. Amen? And so Romans, the eighth chapter, speaks to us profoundly about what that, how that fleshes out. And I dealt with some of it on Resurrection Sunday, but I want to go back into it and I want to deal with it from a different but similar perspective. But I want to deal with it from a perspective of resurrection power and relationship. Resurrection power and relationship. And I'm talking about that relationship that we have with the Lord. Amen? Um, so as you're looking at that, I want you to be zoned in on Romans chapter 8. Uh, and we'll probably focus on... Uh, 1 through 11. 1 through 11. And then we're going to, um, well, I'll tell you what. It's 11.15. We've got 45 minutes. Let's, let's break the bread. Let's see where God takes us with it. Amen. And I want to share through Revelation to help to strengthen that relationship with you and the Creator. Now, on Wednesday nights, we're going to be dealing with specifically Resurrection power in the 21st century. That's going to be the lesson. Resurrection power in the 21st century. This community of believers is called to walk in that power. To live in that power. So, <clears throat> when you guys are able, I want you to, to, I'm not going to say make the sacrifice because getting the word of God is not a sacrifice. It's an opportunity. But for those of you that are available, I want you to be accountable 
Amen. And get in those Wednesday nights because God is going to drop things in your spirit concerning resurrection power that's going to break the threshold of areas that we find ourselves being bound in. Amen? All right, let's get into the Word of God. We're going to go right back where we were last week, and we're going to work through it. And I'm going to focus on different points here. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 reads this way out of the King James Bible. It says, There is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. In essence, what he's saying there in that verse is that for a person who walks in obedience to God, there is nothing that the enemy can do to bring them down. Satan hates obedient people. Amen? And I'll tell y'all something. I sincerely, the more I serve God, the more I'm realizing, and even going in some of these different arenas that the Lord has allowed us to go into, that God loves obedience. And not so much obedience to the sense of where God gives us a word for somebody or tells us to pray for somebody or feeling led of the Spirit in this kind of environment. But you know how the Word of God teaches us that obedience is better than sacrifice. In other words, it's, it's, uh, it's something that God expects through relationship. He expects obedience. He and, and in fact, if he expects it, it means that he doesn't expect disobedience out of those that are his children. Isn't that beautiful? And the thing that I grab from this is when I read this first verse here is that, is that when it says there's no condemnation, there's no condemnation. And how many of you all this morning have had to outlive the condemnation of people around you? The word there, condemnation, it comes from the Greek. It's katakrema. Katakrema. And it means, it means a damnatory sentence. Like people try to, try to sentence you. If you just go to Romans, the first chapter, I'm going to get a little comfortable because I want to teach. Here you go, son. You can just, you can just keep it down there with you until it's time to go. I want, I, want to, I want to deal with this and take my time in dealing with it because I believe that there's some people in this room that have spent too much of your life trying to outlive what people have said about you. I believe you, some of us have wasted countless hours worrying about what they think or what they say or lived up under the umbrella of people who were upset because we moved in a direction that we felt God was telling us to move in, and then they use word manipulation to try to discourage us to block our, our path. So you don't have to wait and go in your room and pray in tongues about people like that or get on your face and fast about word curses and stuff like that. What the word of God say? Look at it. Somebody say, there is no condemnation. Now look at somebody on your road and say, what you worried about? Let God be true and let every man be a liar. Nothing can stop you. But you. God loves obedience. A damnatory sentence, a condemnation. It's, it's, a, it's a place where people try to convince you that you are not within God's perfect plan. And nothing can separate you from God's plan but, but us walking in disobedience. Brother Mac, I sincerely believe that we're giving the devil way too much credit. I believe that we empower Darkness and dark thoughts because we simply 
get to a place where we stop believing. But if you belong to Christ, the word of God says that the law of the spirit of life, that's Christ's law. Christ's law is the law of the spirit of life. Somebody say the spirit of life. His, his law is the law of the spirit of life. And somebody say, well, what in the world is that? Because Brother Robinson, you was talking about the law on Wednesday night, but I'm talking about the law of the spirit of life. It's zoe. The word there for life is zoe life. Is Zoe life. Zoe life. Somebody say Zoe life. When we're talking about Zoe life, we're talking about, in one essence, it covers, and this is where I want to educate you just for a moment, because many times we talk about Zoe life, we think it's talking about um, eternal life in the sense of life when we go to heaven. And in some cases, we talk about Zoe life, they try to associate it with prosperity only. Well, it's not... Um, let me say it is all of that wrapped into one. In fact, when we talk talking about Zoe life, it's the state of one who has been possessed by God's spirit. We talk a lot about demon possession, but how many of y'all want to be possessed by the spirit of God? So, so Zoe life is a place of abundance and overflow kingdom of God overflow for every believer and it covers every single aspect of your life your mind your soul and your spirit and this is the place that the enemy wants to pull you from and get you thinking on a level of life as it pertains to your natural life only the word bios where we hear many times in scripture where it talks about the writing of your historical record, the writing of, of your historical record, amen? The life you live that is pleasing to God, that is bios. But when we're talking about life in this sense, it is talking about the absolute fullness of life. Somebody say the absolute fullness of life. And it talks about the absolute fullness of life in both our ecclesiastical life, which is the life that we live as the body of Christ, God's living organism, the church. And then it also talks about our ethics. How many of you all know that, that in order for us to walk in abundance, we have to be ethical people? God is looking for ethical people, y'all. I'm telling you, many of you are in this room right now, the, the violations that are coming to your life has come into your life because people chose to be unethical. And ethics is not just associated with your secular job. Ethics is, is a, an expression, an expectation of a person's character. It is rules of engagement. It's our foundation. It's the core of our belief system that we wrap up in ethics. Amen? It is the expressions of that, that, that declare the inner thought, the inner heart, the motivation and the intentions behind all that we do. And when somebody violates those ethics... When those ethics are violated, it causes great catastrophe and offense. And a series or a, a domino effect, a ripple effect of activities that impact many people for generations to come. And so the body of Christ is being called out of this not mindset of condemnation and into the relationship with God that gives us the privilege of living life in abundance. And that's the beauty of resurrection power. Amen. There are some people in this world that because of the imperfection associated with creation, because we are, um, by nature, uh, the physical body is dying daily, right? The physical body is dying daily. However, <clears throat> the spirit of God that is within us and the spirit that he has given us that gives us our identity that spirit is alive and well. And so even when we're dealing with things that are generational in life, things that get passed down from family member to family member, generation to generation, it's not just things that seemingly get passed down that are related to physical health. Sometimes there's things that get passed down through culture and ethics within a family that stimulate and articulate our mental health state. I want y'all to let that sink in for a minute. 
And so the solution to dealing with those things is to become not only well-versed in the word from an information perspective, but to believe and to receive the word until that word becomes so written on our heart that it becomes second nature. It just, it's like a reflex for a person that's healthy. The minute that you get hit, you automatically respond with the word of God. Y'all all right this morning? I don't intend to sweat if I don't have to. I want you to really grab this because at the end of the day, we have to move beyond the inspirational perspective of life. And we have to move into this place of being, this place of becoming, this place of I am. Amen? A lot of times in my professional world, I'm constantly doing reports. and We have um, what you call continuous improvement roadmaps, and we have A3s, and we have all of these action items that we have signed out over regions and regions and regions of people. And there's millions and millions of dollars that's attached to these A3s because if people don't perform at a certain level, right, not just in act, but in culture, mindset, environment, then we see a decline in the profitability of these distribution centers that I manage. So we put a lot of focus, right, a lot of focus on uh, utilizing the programs and protocols that are presented to manage the business. Because we've understood that in utilizing those protocols, that managing the business according to plan, that the businesses are profitable and the people are happy. So it impacts a lot of different things. God has these protocols in front of us for a reason. Now, here's the secret. There's a lot of people that try to master principle. Okay? I want you all to hear me. To master principle. If I can just learn this principle, everything's going to be okay. So they end up, become, they end up becoming worshipers of principle. We don't need you to worship the principle. We want you to worship the one who created the principle. Because if you have the principles without the creator, you're going to have a word that is true, that you'll find inconsistency in your life as it pertains to application. So somebody write down this morning, presence, then principle. Presence, then principle. That's the protocol. Presence, then principle. Because if we can get into the presence of God, then the principles are going to be written on our heart. And they will become second nature to us. It won't, we won't have to, have to dig deep to find truth. Amen? So the absolute fullness of life. Zoe is also real and genuine. It's active, it's vigorous, and it's devotion to God. So, so when we're talking about living a Zoe life... Um, unfortunately, if you've heard this taught across major networks, and it's always associated in many cases with money. Amen? It's always associated with money. In many cases. God wants you to have this. He wants you to have that. He wants you to, you know, he, 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 he called you to have the best of the best. That's all fine and good. I am by no means telling anybody in this room that God does not want you to be financially prosperous and successful. But I can assure you that I have experienced both personally and often minister to people who are six, seven figure earners who have bank accounts that are stacked higher than your natural eye can see. But yet they still struggle with indecisiveness and depression and anxiety and their children and their families are still up and down and they still suffer with alcoholism and drug addictions. So we understand by that, just that living example in front of us, that when we start talking about kingdom prosperity and the life that God has called us to live, is that the, the uh, material things that many times come, somebody say, in time, as we apply principle in presence, those things come, but if they don't come within a certain amount of time, it's not going to hinder you from becoming all that you're going to become. Who am I talking to in here? I believe I'm talking to every one of you. Do you realize that you will become who God called you to be before your life catches up with you? And I don't know if some of y'all are ready for that. That realistically, your natural life is a few years behind your spiritual walk.
So anybody ever suffered with the fact that you had a word and nobody wanted to hear what you had to say because your natural life hadn't caught up with your, with your spiritual life? God's going to play catch up with some of y'all because of your obedience to him. And when you start capitalizing on the opportunity to walk in obedience because you understand that in spite of what my current situation looks like, my life and my relationship with God is real. My life and relationship with God is genuine. My life and relationship with God is going to be active and vigorous regardless of how I feel or what financial state that I'm in or, what level, or whatever I have to give up in my life to get to where God wants me to be. I'm going to make that investment in God and in myself because it's worth it. Y'all okay? So it's real. It's vigorous. It's blessed. It's the portion that I owe to God. It's because I put my trust in Christ Jesus. I put my trust in his resurrection power. And because he was raised from the dead, I can now walk in a level of victory with him in Christ Jesus. And so just in that little verse right there, as we begin to read, we're finding that there's so much information and blessing packed in there. Verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, look at this, have made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 2, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So what's condemned, right, what's damned, what has a damnable sentence within us is the wickedness. The carnality, that's what's damnable. That's what's being condemned. Now, I want you to think about that to the perspective because we use those words in our Christian circles. And the first thing that comes to mind is eternal damnation, judgment, hellfire, right? That's the end result. But I want you to think about how blessed you would live if you knew that your cardinal nature had been condemned. That if we understood that that thing that rises up in us that tries to get us to disobey God and go the opposite direction, that it's already been judged. Amen. The biggest fight that we'll have is dealing with the, the polar opposite of how God has given us the grace to think. Amen. I want some of you that's in here this morning to go ahead and take notes if you're taking notes this morning and, 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 then, and write this down. God has given me the grace to make the right decision. God have given you that grace, and I want you to know that within yourself. God have graced you to be able to make the right decision. Verse 5 says that they that are, that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. They that are after, they that are after. What does that mean, Brother Robinson? They that are after, they that are after, they that are after. The word is kata. Kata in Greek. And when you say they that are after, it means they that have come down from. They that have come through and come out of. They that walk according to or toward or they that walk along or in agreement. So it says that they that are after the flesh, when it's speaking about flesh here, it's speaking specifically about the nature of a person absent the spirit of God and obedience. So it says if an individual is walking in a place, amen, to where they either not have encountered God or they have rejected God, and now they're after the flesh. Amen. Um, St. John chapter 3 really brings this up, and I love in St. John the third chapter. And I don't know if y'all have that stretched or not, but I'm going to shift right quick. Um, go to St. John chapter 3, and I want you to look at St. John the third chapter, and I want you to look at, at verses number 3. St. John chapter 3 and verse 3. Go there for me, okay? St. John 3 and 3. Y'all go ahead and turn in your Bibles. I just threw a wrench in their plan back there, so y'all forgive me. But just let me walk you through the word this morning and get this in your spirit. Because I'm telling you, some of you all have been sent into environments that don't want to see this new spirit-filled, empowered uh, uh, you that God has called to fruition. Amen? Somebody put your hand on your chest right quick and say, God has called me forth. Yes, he has. God has called you forth. And when God starts calling you forth, your struggle is going to intensify. Because the old environment that got used to you being complacent and passive and non-vocal and tolerant and just going with the flow to try to please people 
is going to cause a conflict of interest when it comes to your life. Amen. And you're going to have to get a fight in your spirit and a fight that overcomes the fear, amen, of, of uh, the possibility of disappointing the folks around you. Can I share something with you right now? So before you make your decision, you need to know that you're not a disappointment. You need to go ahead and get that in your spirit now because if the enemy has got you locked down with you feeling like you're just a disappointment and you're so far behind and you should be more than where you're at now and things just ain't lining up and my choices, my choices, my choices, you need to get it in your spirit. If God have already received you, you're not a disappointment. Somebody give God praise right there because you ought to get that in your heart. <clears throat> you're not a disappointment because the people that are upset with you didn't appoint you. And if they didn't appoint you, they can't disappoint you. Somebody shout real loud, I'm not afraid. No, nah, y'all not loud enough for me yet. I'll get loud in just a minute. I didn't, thank you, thank you, thank you. I told you, I'm going to try not to sweat. I'm going to give you about 10 minutes, five to seven minutes of exhortation. The rest of us going to be teaching. I want you to get it in your spirit. You are going to face your past environment. You're going to face, face your past culture. You're going to face what God has brought you out of. But St. John chapter 3 says this in verses number 5. Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. How many of you all want to be kingdom citizens? Amen. Lift those hands in the building if you, all, you want that. Lord, I'm a, I'm a, I want to be a citizen of your kingdom. I don't want to just be a member of somebody's church. I want to be a citizen, thank you, brother, of the kingdom of God. Somebody shout, the kingdom has benefits. The kingdom of God have benefits. The kingdom have benefits that this natural world around you, amen, does not have access to. But Jesus said, if you want to be born of, uh, of uh, if I say unto the, except a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So, so coming into right relationship with God, amen, believing and receiving him. Somebody say believing and receiving him. Believing and receiving him. We learned Wednesday night that that's what got Lazarus resurrected. Because, because Lazarus believed and received Jesus before he died. And when he looks at Martha and she tells him, I know my brother's going to be raised back up in the last day. Jesus looks back at her and he says, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me shall never die but live. And then he says, do you believe this? And then he looks at her and says, there won't be anybody that has tasted death that has believeth in me and received me that shall not live forever. And he that yet lives, he that yet lives, amen, and believes and receives me, he or she shall never die. And she lifted her hands up right then and got saved. She said, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. In other words, she removed the doubt. She removed the hesitation. She even took her theology that she had been taught as a child and put a pause where there used to be a period and crossed over into new covenant because she looked at Jesus and she said, I believe these two things about you. Number one, I believe that if you show up when you pray that my brother's going to be resurrected. The second thing I believe is that you are the Christ and that you are the son of the living God. Somebody shout, she entered into the kingdom right then. She had her kingdom key right then. Jesus looked at a murderer on the side of him while he was hung high on Calvary's cross. Amen. And says, surely you're going to be with me in paradise. So God gives an open door to people who operate in high levels of belief and faith in him. He's welcoming the entire house into the family of God. And I'm so grateful for that. Jesus says in verses number six that that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. He said, but marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. One of the problems that we have within the local church today is we are not optimizing this message within the gospel. Within the gospel. We must be born again. Somebody shout, there's a newness of life that comes with it. 
Oh, God, I'm going to be praying that some people around you, amen, that are even in here today that may have just had a season of life where you got saved, amen, amen, and, and you're still in that place of back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and one day it's up, the next day it's down. Listen, I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus that if you leave this building today by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you will experience the born-again life like never before, amen? And it's contagious, brothers and sisters. It is contagious. When one person gets born again around you, let me tell you something. It starts lifting up the environment. It lifts up the culture. It lifts up the core around you. And God will begin to manifest himself through you. Then he says in verses number eight, the wind blows where it lists, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But you can't tell where it come from and whether it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Somebody shout, that's a benefit. Look here now, somebody shout, somebody shout real loud, my hiding place. Look back at verses number eight. It says, the wind blows where it lists, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but you can't tell where it came from or where it goes. Watch this. So is everyone that is born by the Spirit. Well, what's the benefit, Brother Robinson? The benefit is that when you get born, when you are born by the Spirit of God, you move like God. You sound like God. You think the way God wants you to think. You see the way that God wants you to see. And God raises you up to a place to where you are seated with him according to the scripture in heavenly places. And so while the natural mind can look at you and try to figure out, somebody shout, the world cannot figure out kingdom citizens. Amen. The world cannot figure out kingdom citizens. Back to Romans, the uh, eighth chapter. Let's go, back, let's go right back there to Romans chapter eight. And I just turned those Bibles. Amen. To, back to Romans, the eighth chapter. And let's take another deep dive into that and look at what the remainder of the passage says in Romans, the eighth chapter. Thank you all for keeping up with me. Amen. So now we know we're not condemned. We understand that the spirit of life in Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. We understand now that the cardinal nature has been condemned, but the spirit of life in us lives, is empowered. It walks in prosperity. It gives us peace. And then he starts explaining in verses number five that we can start now detecting, see that, and measuring the state of mind that an individual is in. Why? Because when they're born of the flesh, they do what? They mind the things of the flesh. And what are some things that will help us to understand how a person minds the flesh? What are some attributes? Brother Robinson, how can I determine it? Well, let me take you to another passage of scripture since I've already messed up my message and my notes and I'm just teaching y'all out of my spirit this morning. I want you to go to the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter. Go to Galatians chapter five and y'all can get me later. I owe both of y'all lunch. Galatians, the fifth chapter. Go to Galatians chapter five. Somebody say, let him be led. Galatians chapter five. Go to Galatians five. How can I determine if an individual or I am being led by my flesh? Well, guess what? Regardless of whether you have been born again and you are walking by spirit or walking by flesh, your life will yield a harvest. Your life will yield a harvest. What goes through your mind is going to yield a harvest regardless of whether you speak it or not. Amen? And, and I want you all to hear this really quickly. Let's look at Galatians chapter 5. I want you to scroll down to Galatians chapter 5 and let's start with verses number 1. Okay? Galatians 5.1. Galatians 5.1. Here's an admonition from the Apostle Paul to the congregation of Galatia, all right? And this is what he's saying. Galatians chapter 5. Y'all doing good. I see you moving back there, Joel. You got some fast hands. How fast you type? Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Uh-huh. Amen. He says, and I want y'all to repeat after me when I make this statement from the Word of God. And why am I doing this this morning? Because I want this house to get used to declaring God's Word. Somebody shout that really quick. I got to get used to declaring the word of God. Because the first thought that comes to your mind and your natural mind is normally going to be the polar opposite of what the word of God says. Trouble hit, whoo, I'm scared. Trouble hit, Lord, not again. Trouble hit, why now? Trouble hit, I was just getting ready to. Trouble hit, I had just had a conversation with God about what I was going to do next. And then now this. 
So all of that, those 70,000 thoughts typically, and it keeps ratioing up because I keep studying neurology and science, and it done went from 6,000, Dr. Buckley, to 70,000, from 70,000 to 80,000, to them scientists conflicting and arguing back and forth. But the one thing they all agree upon is whether it's 6,000, whether it's 70,000 or 80,000 thoughts that go through the human brain on a day-to-day -day basis or not, one thing they can agree on is that the thoughts from, the, from today, that there is uh, a 5% margin for innovation, creativity, and new thought because the thoughts that we think today are filled with the thoughts that we did not close out previously. So if you had a bad day yesterday and you beat yourself up yesterday and you didn't pick your word up yesterday, and you came up with all these solutions and ideas about how you was going to handle this situation or how you was going to manipulate that situation or how that was going to turn out or how this person sees me or thinks about me or what or how am I going to do this now? And that was how your yesterday was. And we pulled on people when we poured on the word, word of God. Then at the end of the day, when you get up that next morning, those same thoughts are going to be where? Right here. And that first thought is going to be a reciprocation of the seed that you let your mind sown, even if it was unspoken. So it dictates mood, it dictates belief system, it dictates attitude, it dictates how you feel. And before you know it, you can think yourself into a depression. Because you counted yourself out and did not include the word of God. Man must not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Any day that you have a lack of communion with God is a wasted day. So I just set myself up for tomorrow to be in the same state, if not worse, and I gave myself a 5% margin to think myself happy. <sighs> How many of y'all got stuff to do? Anybody got stuff to do? Let me say it like this. How many of y'all got a lot to do? How many of you all need more than a 5% margin to get God involved in what's on your mind? Then the application of this belief system that I'm teaching you is from God's kingdom. And he's telling us, if you're going to live, you're not going to be able to live your life based off of how you feel and based off of what you think people think and based off the current situation. We're going to live by the word of God, the logos, the rema, the rema, the written word of God, as it comes to us as a living word. And that word is the declaration of faith that we have to be able to teach. Amen? And so the Bible says, stand there fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free. Doesn't that sound like Romans chapter 8 and verse 1? Don't it sound like it? What does Romans 8, 8 and 1 say? There is now therefore no condemnation for them who are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So now I know for a fact that I am not condemned. I'm walking in obedience. I'm in Christ. That means favor is on my life. Amen? God has favored me. He has called. He's chosen. He selected and elected me to be one of his. He came to his own and his own received him not. But to many of them that believed, excuse me, received and believed in him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. But he says, here's my admonition to the house. And I want y'all to get this because this comes straight from the apostle. He says, stand fast. What does it mean to stand fast? What does that mean when you say stand fast? What does it say stay, stand fast? What does that mean? Huh? Yeah, stand still, stay rooted, stand fast. When it say stand fast, this, this is what it means. Hold your post. It, 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 you're, you're right, but it's more than just standing still. It's more than just standing still and seeing what's going to happen. It means when it say stand fast, watch this. It means to stand in communion with the seed that was planted in you. Hear me now. Stand in communion with the seed that have been planted from you. We, we talk real deep in our deliverance ministries. We talk about we're going to deal with these situations. You got to get to the root. No. Before there was ever a root, there was a seed. There was a seed. And so if the seed that is lying down in our spirit 
is influencing thoughts that are the opposite of what God has said, then we can't stand fast. Amen? Because now there's a contradiction of thought. There's a contradiction of thinking. I don't know if to believe how I feel or if I don't know how to, if I believe the word of God. And the Bible says that a double-minded person is unstable. If you got unstable people in your life, it's because they're thinking out of two different opinions and they're not standing on the truth. Amen, somebody. Are y'all with me? So to stand on the truth means to stand fast. You're fastened to the seed that is the word of God. The seed that is the word of God. And that seed is indestructible. Somebody shout, it's indestructible. When I tell you that word is indestructible, it says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ have made us free. And then look at the comma. It's got a comma there, right? Somebody say, and? What's the next thing it says? Be not, what? With what? You know how many people read that first part of that scripture and never make it past the comma? They never make it past the comma. Why don't they make it past the comma? Nobody forces entanglement on us. Entanglement is a decision. Uh-oh. Somebody said, ask Jada. <laughs> entanglement is a decision. This is a choice. And we got to own that. Y'all went dead on me. Possibly you were fine until you threw that brick. Well, you know me, I'm going to get you. I mean, I'm going to put it out there because now it comes down to why are we in mental bondage? Why are we in mental torment? Why do we continue? When we just read, God said, I'm not condemning you. I'm not doing anything that is going to be counterproductive for your life. I'm not putting any level of weight and responsibility on you that I've not already empowered you to get through and to overcome by the power of this word and by the grace of the Holy Spirit and by the unction of the anointing that is upon your life. I have built you to outlast it, says God. So why do we continue to be entangled? So Paul says there's a problem. The problem is when we look back, he says that if we look down and just scroll right down to that same passage, look at verse 9. Look at verse 9, family. Look at verse 9. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Somebody read verse 9 out loud, real loud. Y'all ready to read that, verse 9? Somebody say, a little? Leaven. Does what? It leavens the whole lump. One, one, um, one book says that a little, little leaven, it spoils the whole lump. If I look at verses number 9 in the New Living Translation, I like the way that it brings it out, Brittiana. It says, this false teaching is like a little yeast that spreads through a whole batch of dough. This false teaching is like a little bit of yeast that spreads through a whole batch of dough. Now, for all of y'all in the room whose mama taught you a little something about cooking or daddy taught you a little bit something about cooking, what happens when yeast hit dough? It, yeah, it expands. It does what? Yeah, it causes a metamorphosis, don't it? Causes some type of a transformation. Anybody ever seen yeast make any type of moves when yeast is just connected with yeast? Yeast, yeast's purpose is only manifested when it is sown into an environment that it can influence. <laughs> so the kingdom of heaven is likened to a woman who took yeast and sowed it into three measures of meal until the whole was leavened. So the yeast is a doctrine. It's a belief system. Amen. And on one side, it can be a doctrine of Christ. On the other side, it's a doctrine of devils. If it's a doctrine of devils, it's going to cause a transformation in the person to where they'll know that they're out of the will of God. They'll entangle themselves with the things that God has told them not to entangle with. Watch this. But the yeast will cause pride to stand in the presence of God. And these people will continue to repeat the same situations and scenarios over and over and over again. Sister Timberley, you could take an individual who has a mindset that is set on false doctrine, false theology that have been created within themselves because of a hesitation and a refusal to repent. And they will create false narratives around a situation. And instead of repenting to God, they'll create a narrative to have people to have pity on them. 
and special attention when the only thing they have to do is embrace the truth. And God said, when they embrace that truth, he said, I will make them free. So watch this. Satan is not blocking people from getting delivered. People are blocking themselves from getting delivered because of these narratives that we create in our lives. Amen. Instead of going to God and getting it right with him and trusting that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. That's the type of God that we serve. And so when we scroll back down just a little bit more and the manifestation of the level, leaven, excuse me, of the leaven is in uh, verses number 16. I'm going to read it again from the New Living Translation, okay? I'm in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16. Y'all all right out there? Okay, Ephesians 5, 16. It says this, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Whoo, boy, somebody said that hit. That didn't hit. It hit me. It hit me. Because it, what, it, what it told me, y'all, is that, Kevin, you got to keep your spirit in check. You got to keep your spirit in check at all times. You're going to get faced with all type of things, amen, that's going to come against you. But can I help y'all with something? I want y'all to hear me now. Everything that comes against you is not a temptation. Listen, it's only a temptation if your flesh lusts after it. Brother Robinson, how do you know that? Because I already know that God don't tempt people. The Bible says that God don't tempt no man with evil. But when a person is tempted, amen, they're drawn away in their own lust and enticed. You see that? Satan is an enticer. <laughs> so some of these manifestations, we're going to wrap this up. Some of these man manifestations is um, the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit desires. And the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. So listen, somebody write this down. As long as there is an internal war, as long as there's an internal war between the spirit of God and the lust of the flesh, right? That means that the person who is having that war has been neutralized. They, they can't move forward in life because they're at war within themselves. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation of the law of Moses. But when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Watch this. Sexual immorality. Impurity. Lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division. Sound like a cookout? Sound like, sound like a family reunion? Now I want y'all, now I want y'all, I'm trying to teach y'all something this morning. Y'all give me just a minute and I'm going, I'm going to shift. And I'm not going to hold you here all day, I promise you, because I'm, I'm ready to go spend some time with my family too. But I want y'all to hear this. If you, if you stop for a minute and really read this word from a lens of studying and receiving the word of God, what the Apostle Paul is providing for the student and for the hearer is a road map to track outcomes that will come as a result of just doing one of them. So go back to the first one. The results are very clear. The first one, sexual immorality. Boom. The minute that we commit ourselves to something involved in sexual immorality, it opens up a door. Don't drop your head up in here now. It opens up a door, and the door that it opens up to is number one, the person is impure. After they're imp um, impure, it opens up another door for now there's a lustful desire. Now you feel like you got to have it. You get addicted to that. There's an addiction now. It's a need. The flesh is hungry. You done fed it, so now the flesh is hungry. The flesh got to have it, boy. I'm telling you. And if you don't get it, 
and you are born after your flesh and not after the Spirit of God, your flesh will torment you until you get it right with God. Till we get it right with God. After that, watch this, comes idolatry. Now what happens is the person starts worshiping either the partner or the act itself or the behaviors. Watch this, and what's even worse is they start self-worshiping. That's where selfishness comes from. Selfishness is birthed out of self-worship. So after that comes, watch this, then it's sorcery. Because now if you can't get what you want, you're going to start bending situations and bending people's minds and painting false narratives and creating all these different avenues to get what you want through the spirit of manipulation. And if that's not working and you can't satisfy the lust of that flesh, and the flesh is still hungry, then there's hostility. Now I got an attitude. Now I'm mad with everybody around me. Everybody around me. Everybody's against me. Nobody cares. Everybody's always against me. I never get a fair shot. You see, now I'm angry. But what you're seeing when you see that attitude is you're seeing an individual who has been on a road map to self-indulgence. Oh, boy. And then after that, Watch this. Then the, then the quarreling comes. Now I'm fighting. I'm not just holding it anymore. Now I'm opening up my mouth and I'm arguing back and forth and I'm hitting people with words and tearing them down with words because they made me feel bad about myself. Now I'm going to make you feel bad about yourself. And now you got mothers turning against daughters and fathers turning against sons and families are in disarray and people are picking sides and choosing this thing over that thing. And the church wants us to just lay hands and hug people through this demonic activity that is really the picture of a generational curse that has come as a result of simply not receiving the opportunity to be born of the Spirit of God. Because when you are born of the Spirit of God, these things become nullified and stilled. They have no impact. Romans 1 said there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen, somebody. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1 says, Stand fast in the liberty in which Christ has made you free, and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. What is the advantage of that? I'm going to stop the curses of the cardinal nature that are in enmity with God and when I cannot please God I find myself being drawn back to the altar amen somebody and not just asking for healing and for help but I'm coming to God just like I am to repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand and if I repent I know that Christ Jesus is the door and he said that every person that tries to come up they come to me as a thief and a robber and I'm not going to be classified with thieves and robbers when I'm a kingdom citizen I'm coming to God as humble as I know how and lifting my hands to him and telling him God is me that's standing in the need of prayer and I'm coming to you today because I want to be cleaned from the inside out I want a new heart I want a right spirit I want a new worship I want a new praise I want a word that will be written on my heart that I might not sin against you God I want to be made over and if you're in this building this morning and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this road mac of hell and damnation that eventually manifests into a separation from the kingdom of God and now I can't function if I'm not drunk now I can't live and have fun if I don't have a wild party I cannot do anything if I'm not fighting and having outbursts I'm coming to tell you brothers and sisters that they that practice such things cannot enter into the kingdom of God now that links me back to St. John chapter 3 because St. John chapter 3 says except a person be born again after the water and after the spirit they cannot enter into the kingdom of God that tells me that Galatians chapter 5 amen and verses number 21 say that these that practice such things which mean that people that are not born again have been subject to the law of their own flesh and will be drawn into these ideologies somebody give God praise in this building this morning because you have been liberated from your previous life you've been freed from hell and from damnation and the bible tells us right here that the same spirit galatians romans chapter 8 that the same spirit that raised jesus christ from the dead is the same spirit amen that will make alive
drive our motor body. How many of you in here are ready to receive Christ Jesus as he is? Somebody shout, I want to receive him as he is. Because if you can receive him as he is, he comes to you. Amen. Amen. In a spirit of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He comes to you in the spirit of life. He comes to you in the spirit of kingdom prosperity to lift each and every one of us to a place to where we're able to function in the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters in here, I want to encourage you. In other words, I want to encourage each and every one of you. And I'm getting ready to take my seat, believe it or not. I told you I wasn't going to sweat myself to death today, but I was going to give you a teaching that was going to keep you reaching. I was going to give you something that was going to give you a little piece to nibble on and to give you to a place to where you can get your life to the next level. Amen. Oh God, the spirit of God. Somebody shout the spirit of God. Come on, the spirit of God. You ready? All right, I said the spirit of God. Somebody shout real quick the spirit of God. The spirit of God gives life. Somebody shout the spirit of God gives strength. Somebody shout the spirit of God. The spirit of God helps me when I'm in my time of need. The spirit of God keeps my mind fixed on perfect peace. The spirit of God is what leads me and guides me to all truth. The spirit of God is what washes and cleanses this holy temple. The spirit of God, brothers and sisters. And that's why Jeremiah said that it's not by power, nor by might, but by the spirit of God that you will be able to overcome every single step of the way. Somebody shout real loud. I'm walking by the Spirit. I'm walking by the Spirit. And there's going to be a season as you're led by the Spirit that you're going to go further than just being saved. The Bible says that they that are led by the Spirit, that they are the sons of God. St. John, 1 John chapter 3. Amen. 1 John, the third chapter, John says these words to the hearer. He says, Beloved, what manner of love have the Father bestowed upon us that we might be called the sons of God? Somebody lift your hands and give God praise because you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you belong to Jesus. Come on, you should give your testimony right there in your seat because if you didn't belong to Jesus, you'd have lost your mind last year. If you didn't belong to Jesus, you would have overdosed at the last chance you took that pill. If you didn't belong to Jesus, you would have committed suicide and lost your mind. If you didn't belong to Jesus, you got more to praise God for than what you're giving yourself credit for. I need 15 people in the room to lift your voice and lift your hands and say, I belong to Jesus. And if I belong to him, that means he's prayed for me. If I belong to him, that means he's interceded for me. If I belong to him, that means he's already healed my body. If I belong to him, he's already made a way out of no way. Somebody shout, I belong to him. And because I belong to him, he keepeth me in perfect peace because I keep my mind stayed on him. Give God praise in this Pentecostal environment because you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if I'm praying, I'm praying. I'm interceding not just for myself, but I'm praying for the people around me that have been trapped. Stay with me. I'm going up. Stay with me don't go back down I said I'm staying in a place of intercession why am I in intercession sister Gail because I might be all right but I can't really be all right when I'm looking around me and the people that I love are still trapped in the spirit of their mind I'm coming to tell you don't you deal with the behavior alone don't you deal with the word alone. You got to get down beyond the stalk, down through the trunk, 
look, uh, check out the root system, uh, bear fruit and manage it uh, by watching uh, what type of fruit fell from the tree. Uh, and once you see fruit, uh, you can identify seed. Uh, somebody give God praise uh, in this building uh, because I just shortened for you uh, the time that you've been spending uh, trying to figure people out. Uh, you don't have to waste uh, two more years uh, or three more years. Uh, check the fruit. Uh, the Bible says uh, that you will know them uh, by their fruit. Uh, if the fruit is rotten, uh, if the fruit is poison, uh, if the fruit is seedless, uh, then you know uh, that it did not come from God. Uh, but if you check that fruit, uh, you'll know uh, beyond a side of a doubt uh, what the potential is uh, in that seed. Uh, can I prophesy uh, over divine empowerment uh, international uh, this morning uh, and tell you uh, that the seed that is in you uh, is the seed that God sowed. Uh, it is the seed that is called uh, the word of the Lord. Uh, and if you got a word in your belly, uh, that means you got a prophecy in your mouth. Uh, and if you've been waiting uh, on the person beside you uh, or even the preacher uh, to speak a word over your life, uh, I want you to stop that. Uh, stop waiting on Wednesday. Uh, stop waiting on Sunday. Uh, stop waiting on Facebook. Uh, and get up. Uh, Paul said, uh, I know uh, that all of you after you've been filled with the Holy Ghost uh, that you speak in tongues uh, he said I speak in tongues uh, more than all of you uh, he said uh, but I rather uh, that you prophesy uh, reach all over this house uh, and tell somebody in here uh, you're going to prophesy uh, you're going to prophesy uh, the word of the Lord uh, concerning your situation uh, you're going to prophesy uh, somebody shall prophesy uh, prophesy truth to power Prophesy, prophesy truth to error, prophesy, prophesy truth to ignorance, prophesy, prophesy truth to lies, prophesy, you better prophesy, you better prophesy to the wind and reap the whirlwind. Somebody give God praise in here for 15 seconds, knowing that God put something on the inside of you that's going to snatch your family out of hell. God put something in you that's going to bring your family out of bondage. I said God is able to keep you from falling. To him be the glory. To him be the power. To him be dominion. Amen. In the name of Jesus, give him praise all over the house. Why don't you? Come on, bless him for the seed. Bless him for the seed. Bless him for the seed. Hallelujah. He didn't make a mistake when he put that word in my belly. He didn't make a mistake when he entrusted me with the spirit of prophecy. That is the testimony of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout real loud. This too shall come, but it's going to pass. Trouble don't last always. Reap it. May endure just for a night. Oh, but joy coming in the morning. Shout yeah! Woo! Somebody shout joy! Somebody shout joy one more time! Shout joy until it infects you. Shout joy until it changes your mind. Shout joy until it makes you happy. Shout joy until it gets contagious. Shout joy. This walk that God have you on, God gonna take you to the road. Just gotta have a crossroad. One side you gonna have your flesh, the other side you are gonna have the Word of God and you got the Spirit of God. You gotta make a decision. They're gonna be more on the side of your flesh. They're gonna encourage you. They're gonna draw you in. But if you're gonna be a man and woman of God, you can't go with the crowd. You can't go with what's popular. You can't go with what it feel good, cause it's not gonna feel good. 
Your whole life's going to be crucifixion. There's going to be pain, but it won't be trouble. There's going to be sickness, but it won't be under death. But God said, I want to work with some people. I want to work with some people. I want to work with some people, divine empowerment, that's ready to let me get my hands dirty. God said, I don't mind getting my hands dirty. I don't mind dealing with things that's being decomposed. That's why I got Lazarus. I needed to get him after the fourth day so that nobody can say that according to Jewish custom, he was in a coma. Somebody shot. He wanted no coma, but he was asleep. He was asleep. But he was decomposing. He was asleep. But his body won't protect it. And one call on the seed that was planted on the inside of Lazarus called his spirit to look over at Moses and Elijah and all the other prophets in the land of spirit. And he said, hold on, brothers. And hold on, sisters. It's nice down here. But I hear the master's voice. I hear a call from the other side of eternity. I've got to jump back in my earth suit. I don't have nobody around me that's going to loose these burial clothes. But I'm coming out in the state that I am, waiting on God to give instructions. And my word to you, and the power of his resurrection is lose him, lose her, and let my people go. Let them go because I'm calling calling them out of darkness into the light of God's glory. Give God praise in this house if you can see yourself coming out of this with a mouthful of praise. Is anybody in here got a praise in your spirit because God has set you free. My situation is not what I want it to be right now, but I'm free of my praise. I'm free in my worship. I'm free in my obedience. I'm free in my servant. Can't nobody bless me like Jesus. Yeah. Stop. I got to quit. I got to quit. They want. I got to quit. I got to quit. I got to quit. I got to let them go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Resurrection power. Jeff, go resurrect the school. Go resurrect the teachers. Go resurrect the students. Go resurrect the parents. The spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, rest that on the inside of you. You're not walking up in there with your education. You're not walking up in there with your good heart and your love for people. Somebody shout, I came in the power of his resurrection. I came in the volume of this book to do God's will. So if you think I showed up just to stroke your ego. You're sadly mistaken because I'm not your guy. But if you want to see blind eyes open, if you want to see deaf ears unstopped, if you want to see the lame walk and the blind see that call on Jesus and God will do what is said. He's going to do through you, with you, and even in spite of you. Lift your hands and say the kingdom has benefits. The kingdom has benefits. So we're going to declare this week resurrection week. Somebody say resurrection week. Resurrection week. I know last week was Easter. I know last week was a celebration of the day. But I declare that this week is resurrection week. Hallelujah. God going to deal with some dusty stuff. He going to deal with some decomposing things. He's going to resurrect some dreams that you put on the shelf. He's going to resurrect that old worship and that old praise you used to have. He's going to resurrect some things. The Bible says that he is the potter. And we're on the clay. And God, I don't have anything to say to you with how you mold me and how you shape me because you're the creator and if you can deal with dust and baptize 
baptizing in water even if it looked like mud in a great house there's not only vessels of gold and silver earth and wood some for honor and some for dishonor but if a man will purge himself from these he shall be a vessel unto honor me for the master's use and prepared for every good work I want you to prophesy on your row and say I see with my eyes an honorable vessel somebody shout even if you're broken God's going to put you back together and if you're broken God said I'm going to put you back together with my very own hands because even in your brokenness I need you to understand that you're still a person of value I don't throw away wasted things somebody shout God takes what man won't respect and what man neglects and what man throws away and he says this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes I'll give you beauty for ashes joy for mourning and a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness give God praise in here because you have value and significance in the eyes of the Lord so stand fast in the liberty in which he has made you free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage you are valuable don't you base your self worth off these past relationships don't you base your self worth off of rejection and abandonment don't you base your self worth off of the abuse that you face that you've had to cover up for the sake of the family God said I'm so sick and tired of these family secrets having to walk in abuse and trauma and I can't speak my truth because I'm protecting people God said I want you free I want you set free. I come against the cycle in the name of Jesus. If the seed was abuse, if the seed was molestation, if the seed started at a deep, dark place in your early childhood, God said, I come to resurrect you. I come to raise you up. I come to pull you out of that place of darkness and to prune off the dead branches and to prune off, uh, amen, somebody, to prune off all the things uh, that are sucking up your energy and sucking up your life. He said, I am the true vine uh, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, it shall be cut off. Somebody lift your hands and say, God, cut it off. Uh, I'm so sick and tired of carrying it. Uh, I'm tired uh, of carrying the weight uh, and the sin that so easily beset us I'm going to run this race you don't have to live your life in a closet hiding who you are and who you are to become God said come out Talathia, Kumana, arise and come forth. Arise, my sister. Arise, my dear brother. Arise, young child. Arise, people. Arise in the name of Jesus. But don't you spend another day trapped with only a 5% margin of you being creative and innovative. That's not the life that God have commissioned for you to live. You shall do great things, says the Lord. You shall do great things. You shall make a great impact. You shall impact many people. You shall be the head only and not the tail. You shall be above and not beneath. You shall lend and not borrow. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are more than a conqueror through him that has come against you. You are of God, little children, and overcome them. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world so what shall you say unto these things if God be for us who in the world might be against us I'm going to close this message out the same exact way I started it I want you to lift your hands I want you to lift your hands
Jesus and I want you to give him praise and I want you to shout these words I belong to God I belong to God I belong to God I'm one of his very special own children and if the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry David said I cried unto him and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears when God comes to deliver he's not going back empty handed he's coming and taking infirmity he's taking sickness and disease he's taking your torment somebody shall take it Lord Oh my, oh my, whoa, oh, oh, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to the Lamb of God, glory, somebody shout, he's able, come on, shout it to him. He's able. He's able. Hallelujah. Somebody on your road need to hear that right now. Somebody shout. He's able. He's able. My God, my God, my God, my God. My God is able. Come on, encourage somebody behind you and let them know. Be encouraged. Brittany, I need you to be encouraged because God is able. Hey, Baba Bossy. Somebody say, He's able. Woo! My God is able. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, woo! He's able. He's able. I feel the Holy Ghost. The prophet is, I feel his spirit down in my sanctified soul. I know he can bring you out. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Come on there. That's right. That's right. Go on and get that breakthrough right where you're at. Right, right there. I feel the power. God Almighty, I feel it. Lord, I reverence your spirit in this place. I reverence your spirit in this place. Lord, I reverence your spirit in this place. You said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall heal the sick and lay hands on them and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Lord, I feel your presence in this place. Hallelujah. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. Go on and testify to him. We're going to leave in a minute. Go on and testify to him while you got a minute. Go on and testify to him. Go on and tell him thank you. It's all right. Go on and testify to his healing power. Go on and testify to his miracle working wonder for self. Father, we love you. Lord, right now in your presence, I thank you for your spirit. Thank you for honoring this word of deliverance that you give me for this house. I don't take it for granted. We don't take you for granted.
We just want to experience you in your fullness. You're so merciful. Thank you for being the door of hope and deliverance for these, your people. I pray as we go through this week that this be a week of resurrection power. Let there be the manifestation of your power in our comings and in our goings. Restore hope to those that have lost hope. And I'll be careful to give you praise. In the name of Jesus. <coughs> amen. Amen and amen. Good God Almighty. stand to our feet in the presence of the Lord. Prophet Sheila, you want to come on up with me? Lord have mercy. Jesus. Lord have mercy. I'm a humble man in his presence now. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and take this opportunity to sow our love gifts, our tithe and our offering. We want to welcome you in, our online family, for those that are watching. I want you to <clears throat> sow an honorable seed unto the Lord, okay? Sow an honorable seed unto him. I feel like God's church in here, don't it? <laughs> Amen. As you bring your seed today, as you sow, whether it's electronically or whether you give um, with heart giving in our baskets, I want you to be prayerful as you come. Remember, this is a seed you have. And I want you to claim that seed. I want you to put a word on that seed. Amen. Make that investment. And may the Lord reciprocate your seed back to you a hundredfold. I'm asking the Lord today, for every seed that's sown, may it be a hundredfold return on your life. In the name of Jesus, I give God praise for that. hundredfold return as you sow today. Whether it be online or whether it be here in person, 100-fold seed today. You need an envelope, lift those hands, and the Lord's going to, will one of our ushers will bring you an envelope. I want those of you that are giving by debit. I'm going to pray. As soon as I pray, I'm going to let you all go to the back. Amen. I'm going to pass the mic to Pastor Sheila and she'll take the service from there, okay? Is that all right? Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me straight. I'll tell you what, I'm going to pray and then I'm going to pass the mic to the prophet and then she's going to take it from there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Father, Bless the giving today. Many came, God, and they, give, they gave more today than they've given in a long time. Just in their heart, in their worship, in their expressions of faith. And now we're giving monetarily. And I pray, God, that you will bless this monetary seed just as you would bless, amen, our spiritual seed and those things that we offer unto you. I ask you, Lord, to multiply it a hundred times over. I pray, God, that you press it down and make room for more for them. In the name of Jesus, for those that are in lack, Lord, meet every need. And we'll be careful to give your name praise and glory and honor. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. Receive Prophetess Sheila. Just a couple of quick announcements before we go. Um, I want to thank everyone in advance. Uh, those of you who are going to volunteer on next Saturday um, for the celebration of life for Mr. Clinton Leach. Um, he is the father-in-law and father of our associate pastor, Ricky and Nicole Boykin. Um, he transitioned on last Sunday. So we're going to um, 
serve this family because y'all know they're very dear to our hearts. Those of you that know them, um, some of you that recently came, you might not know them because they live in Kentucky right now. But um, they were actually here on Easter Sunday um, because they had came, they had got a call that he was very sick. And they came in and saw him, came to church just a few hours after the church let out on Easter Sunday, got a call that he had transitioned. So we want to, uh, we covet your prayers for them, for the entire family, for the, for the, the children, the grandchildren, the siblings. Um, they, um, she, she actually, they buried, buried her mother about nine years ago. Um, we actually did her eulogy as well. Um, just to give you a, 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 a small testimony, um, she, um, when she had went down to, uh, to the burial, to the uh, cemetery, um, she told them, she says, can I get a, a plot? Um, I, w- I want to try to find a plot just as close to my mom as possibly, as possibly, as possible. And she said that um, the lady said she had to go back into and get this big old book that they, you know, have all the burial plots and names in. And um, uh, when her mother had passed, um, she asked them if they, if they could, um, she wanted to hold a plot uh, right next to her for her father um, in preparations of whenever that day was. And um, the lady told her, she said, look, we can only hold it for 90 days. So you, you're gonna have to come out here, back out here in 90 days and put some money down on it, pay for it if you want us to hold that plot. So the lady goes back in the, uh, and gets this big old book and she comes back out with this big old book and she says, well, we only have one, and there's one that's right next to him, but we're holding that for Nicole Boykin. And she, she said, the, the lady, she said, lady, ma'am, that is me. So nine years, they held that plot right next to her mother. So, yes, she, so they, she's going to get to lay him to rest right next to her mother. And she was just so elated about that. And, um, but we're going to be here to serve those, serve those families. So if I, I contacted all of you, your auxiliaries, uh, we'll need ushers, greeters, um, parking attendants, security, um, hospitality, our music, our audio, video, y'all know, whatever, y'all know how we do it. Um, we want to serve them fully. Um, if there's somewhere, you, if you're not a part of those aux- auxiliaries and there's somewhere you want to serve, um, just, just let us know. We'll put you to work. If you want to come, it'll be Saturday. Um, the funeral is at 12 p.m. right here at DEI. Um, the repast will also be here as well. Um, if you can't be here and you want to give a benevolence offering uh, towards a repast, you can just send that to, um, to DEI or, or, turn, or hand it to uh, Sister DeLon, swipe, whatever you want to do. Uh, we'll be grateful uh, for whatever amount that you want to put toward the repast uh, to serve um, this, this, this beautiful family. Also coming up on Saturday, April the 20th, will be our men's, our men's breakfast, our Divine Sons Breakfast with the Brothers. It's going to be a time of edification, enrichment, and engagement. Saturday, April 20th at 9 a.m. They'll be meeting in the fellowship hall, okay? Uh, so men, put that on your calendars. Also, the women, we'll have our another uh, gathering on, on May the 4th on that Saturday morning as well. So I'll, I'll be reminding you of that uh, weekly as that time uh, draws near. And that's all the announcements that I have. For you guys on today, we pray that you um, receive something awesome on today, that God touched you in some way during this service. He always shows up, but sometimes it's up to us to receive what he gives us, huh? Yes, amen. You got to believe and receive. Amen. Amen. All right, with uplifting hands, I'll, we'll let you go and give, give as you go. At the same time, with uplifted hands, now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit May it rest, rule, and abide with us all, both now and forevermore. And let the redeemed of the Lord say amen, amen, and amen. We'll see you Wednesday night.